My show, can you put the camera on me, please? He's just a co host. People say you do things for the ratings, they say you do things for controversy. That David Icke, that David Icke's a nutter! I love that. It's very difficult for me to talk about this kind of stuff. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, that's Different. the funniest thing I've ever heard. What are you going to turn us off when you get bored? It's out of control. He is. Are you watching Silent TV? say anything as a joke these no uh, humor is out of fashion hello welcome to the show i'm big al i'm the doc he's the doc the one with the brain this is the one that talk before uh, engaging brain no 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 not at all yesterday we did a phone in which unfortunately solent tv didn't it's always the way we do five phone ins a week and solent tv are always here on a monday but they weren't yesterday because simon had uh, had hurt his back so simon i today. think that's probably a cover i think it's fascinating how they tend to come in only when i'm here very rarely i know you had that that pat the what's he called pat my the, brand new mate pat the builder yeah, was in yesterday he's very very good i he and i were doing a property up together Wh could uh, I, the weekend b before we talk about the phone can i just ask what were you wearing that ridiculous scar yesterday what is it about you and these scarves you now wear they're, they're for women they're for not only are they for women they're for women of a certain age who's you know they say if you're a woman you can't save your face and your figure I think you can't save your face your figure or and your neck ah uh, you're talking you, the Jackie Collins neck. you've got to choose your neck your face or your body and personally because I've kept the face uh, <laughs> as a man well we can see you haven't kept um, the body the neck has got a little plump I, I admit that, but the, it's, it's, this studio is badly lit. If you're watching mm. on Sony TV, I think you'll see that you're kind of... There's not enough tone, contrast. I actually have a well-defined neck. Are you saying in real life you're only 12 stone and you're a size 32 uh, yes. waist? The, they, they do say, too, that the camera puts pounds on you. I think, in my case, it puts stones on me. Yeah. Uh, but but what is it about this scarf, then? Could you just clear that up well, it's for just, uh, you know, it's just an accessory. You've got to accessorise, Doc. You are wearing more and more eccentric clothes on this show simply for the cameras. You're no, playing, no, no. You're this playing to the camera. Tony Curtis used to wear these in The Persuaders. Yeah, but that, he was Tony Curtis. He had that quiff as well, but... Tell me to say you've got to get one. Hello, line one. Hello, Alex. Oh, dear, just been laughing at you, too. Um, at us all with us. Yesterday and I couldn't get through, but well, am I the only one that couldn't see your, po could see your point of view? Well, Barbara, let's just, for the people who, who are now watching Silent TV, or for the people who are listening to us on our white radio that didn't hear it yesterday, I went on air yesterday and said how fantastic the Isle of Wight hospice, the Old Mountain Button hospice is, and that Walk the White, the annual walk across the Isle of Wight, which I think attracted 6,000 walkers and the, you, you on Sunday. And you have supported it in the past. I always I support that. the hospice. This, this week, uh, this, this year, because presumably it was a bit wet and he didn't want to get uh, the kids wet and he didn't want to get his car muddy or his dog dirty he decided not to support it i'm sure you had other things and let's face it 135,000 people on this island and only if you if you see what i'm getting at only 5,000 or so maybe a few more walked it so the vast majority of people did not get involved in walk the way as you chose not to do right i i was going to walk the second half uh, no i wasn't I was going to walk the last four hours actually um, the last four miles with my two small boys my dog and my my wife my daughter was working barbara anyway one thing to led to another we had a very late start the weather was against us we had low mountains of homework to do it's not an excuse so we never got our act together early enough to do the last no, but that isn't the, point. the last bit but i criticized the hospice yes i criticized the hospice for paying two and a half grand for medals for the walkers yeah. that's what i did i think people should do it for what's inside I not for a reward agree. If I'd done it, I wouldn't want a medal. All right, give it to the children, because I think that encourages them, and they love something mm. like that, don't they? Yep. But, I mean, I can tell you for, quickly of a case. Before Christmas, I got so mad, I had the Royal British Legion send me... They wanted money, obviously. Mm. They sent me a bookmark, a birthday card, and a calendar, and 30 stickers with my name and address on. Mm. Now, if they can afford to do that... Unsolicited? It's... Well, I, well, I'm in, inundated with them. I get them from the Heart Foundation, the NS, oh, not the NSPCC, because I, I do give to them. Cancer Research, Guide Dogs, Dogs Trust, Action for Brown People, North Sea Animal League, and I've had a new one this morning I've never heard of, Care International, it's for black children abroad. Mm. I mean, I'm a, and they put pens in, they put two pens 
pieces on and mm. put sellotape over and ask you if you want to send it back, you can. It, it is a worry, and, and I don't know why charities obviously decided that this works, and I'm leaving aside the medals. Most of the stuff I get these days at home from charities does have a ballpoint pen in or something, as if they feel they need to give you something, and I'm always slightly wary of charities that send me uh, anything yeah. just too much in an envelope. I, I think this must have cost money. I've and got that many stickers with my name and address on. I could set up a shop. And I'm not saying anything about charities because my husband and I give to two charities through the bank. We do it regularly. It's not a lot. But isn't that about charity? Isn't that what charity is all about? You quietly give. You don't do it to yeah, get any glory yeah, back. Right. And that was my point. Now, let me ask you this, Barbara, and I'll ask the doc this because he wasn't here yesterday. In a perfect world, the government would fund hospices, right? But they don't. So 100% of the money that a hospice raises, okay, should go to patient care because every penny counts, right? Well, that was two and a half grand that didn't go to the patients, that went to the people that were doing something for the patients, which is not good enough because those volunteers who got to the hospice, they give their time to look after these people, and it is a fantastic place. They give up their time for these for these people through the goodness of their heart. That is the point I was making yesterday, Barbara, but half the people weren't listening properly. No, I quite agree with everything you said, Alice. I felt really sorry for you yesterday. Well, do you know what? Not only did it cause major upset on the radio... Nearly all the staff turned against me, and I, I met a few people yesterday afternoon who said, you know, I tried to get through to, to, to back you up to be uh, on your hang side, on a but minute. a lot of people... I, I think it's fair to say most of the staff turned against you. I think it's only fair in a company, any company, uh, where the vast majority of people in the business went out, and they, whatever the business was, forget it's a radio station, they went out and they walked. I saw people from uh, uh, my dental practice, that was the practice nurse, the, the dentist themselves, the practice manager from Sandown Dental Practice. If one of them had not gone, and then on Monday morning was standing there in the reception over the drinking fountain saying, well, of course, <laughs> criticising the event in any way, it would not go down well. And well, that's, that's probably rich coming from the here. man who criticised the Isle of Wight hospice when, do you remember, was it seven or eight years ago? Maybe not that long ago, maybe five or six years ago. You made a very valid point on the radio and in the local press saying, you know, there was a paedophile who was being looked after in the hospice, remember? Now, they must have been released from prison to end their days at the hospice. Now, you quite rightly in my book kicked up a fuss about it, right? And I don't think that you were ever really forgiven by the people for doing what it's, it's like it's a hospice you cannot criticize it of course, of course if you want to make it better of course you can criticize it well i think you would have probably had an easier ride yesterday had you have been there like most other people here in the building were doing something but they weren't that though. one person from Isle of Wight radio did the walk the others were at allen bay they at were the doing the kind of either broadcasting or doing support stuff but the thing the, the point is we were all there making some kind of contribution and and i have to say because my kind of lazy job was standing there in the wind and rain for a lot of the time handing out these medals 99 percent of people who got one of those medals were really pleased because it was a massive sense of a achievement people who'd walked the thing for, for years said this was the hardest i've ever done they were delighted to get that little medal and let's face it uh, what did they i think in the end we agreed they cost about 30, 50 pence each. 30 or 40 44 pence, whatever it was it's a very small amount of money when it's you two think, and a half grand hi who's that hi it's louise and al you had such a valid point yesterday oh thank you, you really did your heart is in the right place you know you weren't i i i i've been thinking about it and the point that you really were making was that you know they could have possibly found the money elsewhere. elsewhere. The reason I'm, I'm saying this is um, I'm very much involved with school with fundraising, and whenever we have a fundraising event and we, we look at local companies, we approach them, and we ask for sponsorship. Now, £2,500 is a lot of money for the hospice to lose, but for a company that's making hundreds of thousands of profits every year, Surely that 2500 could be contributed to sponsorship towards the hospice for the purchase of the medals. Well, that is one way of doing it, but I, what I prefer to, to see is, say you went to someone like Mike Reader at Readers in Cows, and you said, look, Mike, it would be really nice if you could pay for the medals, which are two and a half grand, mm -hmm. or 
Give us a thousand pounds cash donation. I bet, and I can't speak for Mike, but he's just the first example came to my head. I bet he would probably say, "Look, I give you the thousand pounds to the hospice, or I give you two grand to the hospice," because that is more important than people get getting medals. It's not about the reward that the people receive. It's a, or look, it's because I care about the money that's raised at the hospice that I made a point about this, and I'm quite happy to go and sit on their board, right, and see where all the money's but going. As Louise is saying, it's very difficult, even at a school, to raise money without actually having to spend some. You need to spend money. You have to have to posters printed and uh, you know there are always expenses when you're trying to raise yeah, but that money. is an unnecessary expense